We next talk about the idea of an inverse function. We begin with the function y equals 10 raised to the x power. And we make a partial table. Now letting x go, let's say, from negative 2 to 2 by step of 1. And we get these y values, obviously. If we plug these y values or these x values in to the function, these are the y values that we get. Now, to get the inverse function, we make a table of y versus x again, and all we do is reverse the columns so that the y column from this table becomes the x column of this table, and the x column of this table becomes the y column of this table. This is a partial table just like this one is. Uh, there are gaps from negative 2 to negative 1 and from 0 to 1. There are a lot of numbers in between. There are infinitely great, uh, infinitely many numbers. Uh, there are infinitely many numbers between these x values here. Uh, the gap between the x values, of course, becomes greater and greater. And the gap between the y values remains the same. This is going to tell us, among other things, that the slope of our graph is going to be decreasing since our rise is always going to be 1 and our run increases with every uh, subsequent position on the table. However, that's uh, not really what we want to look at now. We want to look at this idea of an inverse function. Now, the inverse function that we get when we invert the y equals 10 to the x function, we call log x. This is the definition of a logarithm, y equals log x. We'll note a couple of things about these log functions. One is or the 10 to the x function and the log function. One is that uh, for this function, you can put any number x in you want to, and you can raise 10 to that power. So 10 to the x is always defined for all these numbers. It doesn't matter how large the negative number is. Uh, if we had negative 100, what's 10 to the negative 100 mean? It means 1 over 10 to the 100th power. We can raise 10 to the 100th power just follow 1 by 100 zeros, and we could certainly then take the reciprocal of that, 1 over the 100th power. Uh, you'd have 99 zeros, then a 1, decimal 99 zeros, then a 1. Uh, the domain of this function, then we say, is all numbers. Domain is all the numbers that you can meaningfully plug into this and get a result. The range is all the numbers you can get out of the function. It should be clear that when you take the reciprocal of any power of 10, it's always going to be positive, but it can be as small as you want it to be. So we'll continue approaching zero as we go this way in the table. But of course, as we go this way, we'll approach infinity. So the range consists of all numbers greater than zero. For the inverse function, uh, this incomprehensible word here is domain, uh, when we switch columns, of course, uh, this column can consist of all numbers, consists of all numbers, if we drew the whole column, all the numbers uh, greater than zero. So the domain is all numbers greater than zero. The range could be any number. Uh, y could be any number, since it came from this column, which could be any number. So the range consists of all possible real numbers.